Well, diversity, it is the platform for diversity. What fascinates modern biologists is that all these different animals don't just look the same. They are using virtually the same set of key genes to build their bodies. The body plan genes determine where the head goes, where the limbs go, and what form they take, whether they are arms, legs, or wings. Another set of genes determines an animal's body patterning, the blotches, the stripes and spots. It is the same genes at work in every creature, from the leopard to the peacock to the fruit fly. And yet they produce radically different results. This has led scientists to a crucial insight about how animal bodies have evolved. It's not the number of genes that counts. It's not the genes you have, but how you use them that generates the great diversity of the animal kingdom. Finding out just how these same genes are used to create such amazing diversity has been the work of Sean Carroll and an unlikely hero of modern science. the fruit fly. As much as I'd like to study the mammals of the African savanna, they make poor choices for laboratory animals. They're large, expensive, and they reproduce very slowly. To get data, we have to find the simplest examples of the phenomenon we want to understand. But the humble fruit fly does weird and wonderful things. This fruit fly is dancing for sex. A rapt female takes in the show. She's particularly besotted by the dark spots on the male's wings. Watching it all is an equally besotted Sean Carroll. You might think them just to be annoying, but they're really charming. And the males of this species does a rather elaborate courtship dance where he displays these spotted wings in front of the female. To us, is as magnificent as what a peacock does. But in some species of fruit fly, the males don't have wing spots. So there's another fruit fly species that's different from the spotted species in two important ways. It doesn't have spots on its wings, and it does a lot less dancing. Here, then, is a classic evolutionary puzzle. Why does one type of fly have spots and the other doesn't? Sean Carroll wanted to know. What is going on in their genes that makes them different? So we wanted to take apart the genetic machinery for making wing spots to understand how those wing spots evolved. Carroll began the process of sifting through the two types of flies' DNA. He had one clue to set him on his way. He already knew the gene that codes for the black wing spots. He calls it the paintbrush gene. But surprisingly, when he compared the genes of the two flies, they both had that gene. And yet only one had spots. When we look at that gene in the two species, really, they both have this paintbrush gene. So the big difference is not having the gene, it's how they use it. One species uses it in the wing to make spots, the other one doesn't. So why did the paintbrush gene create spots in one type of fly, but not in the other? In search of answers, Carol turned to one of the least understood regions of DNA, the vast stretches that were once known as junk. It has been called the dark matter of the genome. Mysterious, uncharted, strange, 
the vast bulk of the double helix, some 98% of it, doesn't code for proteins, which make the stuff of our bodies. The genes which do comprise just 2%. Even now, no one is sure what much of this huge non-coding area actually does, but it has long beckoned evolutionary detectives like Sean Carroll. So, this is the band. So that's the fragment to test. Yeah. Carroll had already learned that the paintbrush gene itself was identical in the two types of fly. So he extended his search through their DNA. And in one place, just outside the paintbrush gene, he found an important clue. A stretch of DNA that was different in the fly with wing spots. What could this mean? So Carol conducted an experiment. So you injecting gutafera today? He decided to put that mysterious stretch of DNA that he found in the spotted fly in the unspotted fly. To help him see if it had any effect, he attached it to a gene from a jellyfish, a gene that codes for a protein that makes the jellyfish glow. We cut the DNA up into little pieces, and we hook it up to a protein that glows in the dark. And then we inject that into the unspotted fly. And then something remarkable happened. When we looked at those unspotted flies, we see now their wings are glowing in the dark with spots. Somehow, that mysterious stretch of DNA had turned on the paintbrush gene in the unspotted fly's wings. Once spotless, now it had luminous spots. Bingo, we'd found the piece of DNA that mattered. Carol had found something that is revolutionizing our understanding of how different animal bodies have evolved. A piece of DNA called a switch. Switches are not genes. They don't make stuff like hair, cartilage, or muscle but they turn on and off the genes that do. Switches are very powerful parts of DNA because they allow animals to use genes in one place and not another, at one time and not another. And so choreograph the spots and stripes and splotches of animal bodies. In the case of the fruit fly, it's a mutation a change in just a few letters of the DNA that has caused the paintbrush gene to be switched on. And so, a whole new species with wing spots has been created. But switches are now explaining far more than that. They are helping to solve many perplexing evolutionary questions, like how one creature can become another creature by losing its legs. It all goes back to what Darwin had seen in the snake embryo. The rudiments of leg bumps. This convinced him that a snake must have evolved from some four-legged animal. Over the years, that same mysterious process, the losing of legs, has been seen in other creatures, like the whale. Its front flippers have all the bones of a land creature's arm, even the fingers. And further back in its body, it has the vestiges of a pelvis. Clearly, it is descended from an animal that walked on the land. Lots of animals have evolved to slither uh, through the ground like snakes. Uh, other animals slither or swim through the water like whales. So if you need a streamlined body, it's good to get rid of these things that stick out from the body like limbs. Like the whale, the manatee is another huge mammal that lives in the sea. And it, too, has lost its hind legs. How?
Darwin could never have answered that question. But now, thanks to our understanding of how DNA is switched on and off, and a very small fish, we are getting a little closer. In this lake in British Columbia, there's a creature that really shouldn't be here. A stickleback. Most sticklebacks live in the ocean. But some 10,000 years ago, a few were left stranded in this lake, cut off from the Pacific. And over the years, they have evolved. The ocean stickleback has a pair of fins on its belly that are like spikes. They are for defense. The spikes make the stickleback hard to eat. But the lake sticklebacks have lost those spikes on their bellies. And it's this that intrigues researchers David Kingsley and his colleague Dolph Schluter. To understand what's behind it, they first identified the gene that makes the stickleback spikes. It's one of those key body plan genes, and not surprisingly, they found it to be identical in both the ocean and the lake stickleback. The question was, why hadn't it been turned on in the lake stickleback, which had lost its spikes? Kingsley felt the answer might lie in a switch. We know these genetic switches exist, but they're still very hard to find. We don't have a genetic code that lets us read along the DNA sequence and say there's a switch to turn a gene on in a particular place. But eventually, hunting through the vast stretch of DNA that does not code for proteins, he found it. A section of DNA that had mutated in the lake stickleback. These mutations meant that the switch was broken. It didn't turn on the gene that makes spikes. But this work may have implications far beyond sticklebacks. They are convinced that there is a link between the stickleback losing its spikes and other creatures, like a manatee losing their legs. And they have two tantalizing clues. One, the same body plan gene that is responsible for the stickleback spikes also plays a role in the development of the hind limbs. The second clue is more tentative. The lake stickleback may have lost its spikes, but evolution has left behind some tiny remnants. The traces of bones. And they are lopsided, bigger on the left than on the right. We thought, wouldn't it be amazing if in fact this classic unevenness is the signature of using the same gene to control uh, hind limb loss in incredibly different animal. So Kingsley and his team went looking in manatees, searching for this lopsided pattern. And they found it. In box after box of manatee skeletons, they saw pelvic bones that were bigger on the left and smaller on the right. Right now, Kingsley and his team were looking for the same switch in the manatee that caused the lake stickleback to lose its spikes. And if they find it, they will have a powerful explanation for something that baffled Darwin. How creatures like manatees, whales, and snakes can evolve away their legs. But all this begs another question. If switches can play such a profound role in the different shapes and patterns of animals,